now decide to see it, opens on Friday. Like all artists in China since the revolution... Uh, this was escape, and I think because landscape, in landscape painting, his ideological shortcomings were less obvious than they would be in a figure painting. Maybe because landscape was not closely tied to politics, I could express my feelings in them more freely. By 1958, official art reflected the industrial aspirations of the Great Leap Forward. At that time, all the artists that learned the style from the Russia socialist uh, realism, they tried to uh, get the color, the form, the subject, everything from Russia, from Russia into Chinese art. So if you can find the, the white uh, reflection of the snow or of the gray sky, which is totally different environment in central China. It's the yellow earth, as we say, yellow earth, the people with yellow face. If you compare his work with other artists, particularly in late 1950s, you think Wu Guanzhong's portrait, more Chinese, I think. Of 1965 and Mao's Cultural Revolution, some 160,000 artists were denounced as bourgeois and sent to the countryside for re-education. We all went to the countryside. The whole school, professors, students, staff, workers, everybody went. I felt it went on far too long and it wasted my creative time. Basically, I was not allowed to paint. But sometimes, during my days off, I would paint surreptitiously. I think the Cultural Revolution uh, was a quite important time for him, because he learned what... By 1973, he was once more in favour and was recalled to Beijing to produce full-scale paintings for the new China. On his return, he found artists working in Kuo Wa, a traditional Chinese technique of ink on paper, previously politically unacceptable, but now regarded as a celebration of traditional Chinese values. They were something I wanted to paint, but also permitted by the authorities. We agreed on those paintings. They authorized, and I was willing. After Mao died, it was still quite impossible to paint anything except the very traditional uh, Western style art. Uh, the first Western artists to be tolerated or uh, reproduced in China were people like Courbet and Millet. And then gradually it began to open up, but abstraction was completely out, even as late as 1979-1980. Yet at this time, Wu was writing articles for Art Magazine on abstraction. He said, as a child, I used to look in a kaleidoscope and see these beautiful colors. And I was, I was enchanted by the beauty of the pure color. That's abstraction. Is the um, shadow of the bamboo on the wall of a, of a white house uh, is abstraction. We all respond to abstraction. So why be afraid of it, he said. And to say that at that time was quite a brave thing to do. When he talks of abstraction now, I don't think he means purely non-figurative art. I d he doesn't mean something like Mondrian because totally non-figurative art uh, to the Chinese has no, no content at all. So when he, when he speaks of the kite string as being something that connects the artist with the art reality, however far it's stretched, it must be never be completely severed. I think he means that uh, painting loses meaning when it loses touch with visible form. The late 1970s saw an unprecedented explosion in Chinese modern art. In 1984, Wu organized the first public exhibition of nudes in Beijing. As a teacher, he encouraged the movement, and as a painter, he welcomed its spirit of experimentation. There were two exhibitions of avant-garde art, but I only saw one. Those paintings were political, painted in modern Western style. 
so they were new to the Chinese. They were nothing new to me, though. I had seen them in the West. I think those painters are talented and hope they can find their own style to express themselves. Wu is now highly successful abroad and by Chinese standards enjoys